Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. My name is Eric, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use tween nodes to add a little juice to the movement in your projects. If you wanna follow along, there'll be a link in the description to a GitHub repository where you can pull down this basic example project. So the way I've got everything set up right now, only the green square is gonna move if I hit start. So you'll see it just kinda of slides across the board. This is really the most common or most basic form of movement that could possibly be. We're just adding value to its X position until it reaches the target position that we want. It really can't get any more basic than that. And that could work in a lot of games, but we want to do something a little more exciting for the blue square. So I've got everything set up as it needs. The blue square has already got, actually got a script. If you're not as familiar with how functions work, then maybe you can check out another video. I've got its move function here, but it's just passing, so nothing nothing's happening. We are passing in the target, so we can just assume that it's getting a vector two with an X and Y value, and that's where it's supposed to go. So that's already there. The only thing we need to do before we add the code is add a child node to the blue square, and we're gonna search for tween, and that's, that's all we need. So the tween node isn't just for movement. That's also an important distinction. The tween node can actually be used on, I don't even know, a, a bunch of the properties of a, of a node. Maybe all the properties? I'm not 100% sure. Most of my experience with it has been with things like movement and opacity, uh, changing between sprites, just some pretty basic stuff. So, so we've got the tween node on the blue square. We're gonna use it for movement. So the code, it's just three lines of code. So not too much to worry about. So the first thing we need to do is we need to grab the node. You can call this whatever you want. I call it move tween. Uh, if you have a lot of different nodes and they all have tweens, then I would definitely recommend kind of coming up with your own variable naming structure, especially for the nodes themselves. I would ideally maybe, actually yeah, we can rename this. Let's rename this blue tween. So that's renamed. So maybe that's a little more unique, just in case best practices. So move tween equals get node and since we renamed it it'll be blue tween. So we've got the we've got the tween node. There are a few different functions that you can call on this node, but what we're going to call is interpolate 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 property. So like I said that you can you can interpolate a lot of different properties of this node, but we're going after position. So the first thing we need to do, object, object, that's the object that we're calling it on. We're calling it on ourself, so that's pretty self-explanatory. The property that we're calling, literally position, then we've got to pass in the initial value. So since this script belongs to the blue square, we can actually just say position. It kind of resolves to its own instance variable. Then we're going to say target, which we're passing into the function. And just a reminder, that's a vector two, so it's two values, and we'll be passing in the x and y value of our target coordinates. So target duration, the larger number, the longer it takes. So you slow down the movement, speed up the movement. So let's just say three, we'll say three, and then we can adjust that in a minute. These last two are kind of the, these are the real outliers as far as what you want to do. These affect the way that the transition happens. So there's a lot of options here. I definitely recommend, like I said, pulling down that example project and just playing around with this. But for right now, we're just going to do tween dot trans quint quint. And then for the last one, the the one that I found to look the best is ease out. And you'll see what that means kind of in a minute. Basically it means it's easing out of the transition so it'll start fast and finish a little slower as it, it kind of relates to acceleration, but we'll see that in a second. So, so we've got the tween node, we're interpolating the property, and then the only other thing we have to do is start it. Move tween dot start. So I think if everything is right, then this will work. So let's pull it up. Launch the project. So if I hit start, yes. So 
you can tell automatically a drastic difference between the movement. It's hard to compare just because the blue one's moving so much faster. Let's actually get the we get the green square to move a little bit faster. So let's bump the green speeds up to 15. Let's see how that works. Save it, launch it. Start it again. Okay, so the green square actually didn't look that bad moving a little bit faster. It's harder to tell that the movement's so simple. But the, the main thing with this is that you'll just have to play around with it. I, I like the way the blue square looks, but that may not be the best effect. You know, even the blue square in this setting, that's not super exciting. Let's actually change it just for the sake of this example. Let's change it to in just so you can see kind of the difference. So if it slows down at the end for ease out, then you can imagine that it'll slow down at the beginning for ease in, which it did. So it kind of eases in. I mean, it's, it's exactly what it says. It's easing into the animation or the, the transition. So that's about all I wanted to show. Actually, let's do one more thing. I showed you the ease in, ease out. Let's actually change this back to ease out, but then we're going to change this argument to, I think it's bounce, yeah, bounce, and I think this will probably be the most exciting thing so far. So we'll do the exact same thing, except this time when we hit start, the blue square gives a nice little bounce at the end. So yeah, that looks so much better. That's fantastic. And you can play around with that. Again, I highly encourage you to dive into this project, play around with it, change whatever you want, add buttons, add squares. I think it's extremely useful to get some hands-on experience with these functions, and that's what I want these videos to help you do. I want there to be these specific example projects designed kind of around these individual features so that they're easy to understand and easy to implement in your own projects. In the future, I'll definitely dive into a series where we build out a game together, maybe, a, maybe an Android app, for example, I've got a pretty good idea for one of those, but that'll be in the future. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about tween nodes now. If you enjoy what you saw or you learned something, hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment. I'd really appreciate it. I want to hear what people want. I want to make sure that I'm making content that people enjoy, people understand. This is actually my first video on this channel, so I'm super excited. I hope you are. That's all I got for now. Thanks for watching.